As more and more of my friends hound me asking me questions about which camera they should get into when starting out with film photography, my suggestion is pretty much always starting out with some relatively cheap point shoot. When you're just starting out, making sure your exposure settings are correct and making decisions about aperture, shutter speed, etc can be quite a stimulus overload, especially with the given risk that comes with film at the current price point. Because of this, I pretty much always recommend a cheaper point and shoot so they can worry about um, pretty much just composition, lighting conditions, and then um, which type of film they're gonna use. While with film popularity rising and more and more cameras being yoinked off the shelves, it's still quite possible in 2024, I think, to pick up an affordable, reliable point and shoot film camera. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first on the list is the Olympus Trip 35. Released in 1967 and popular through the 90s, these Olympus Trips stand the test of time and are quite legendary cameras that can be found for pretty cheap still today. It also has some aperture control and zone focusing, giving you some decent control over some of the automatic settings. The lens is a 40 mm f2.8, which is a nice medium to wide lens that does quite well in low light. For around $80, the Olympus Trip is a great blend of point and shoot, but with some more robust manual control to it. I think one thing that the many fully automated point and shoots miss out on is the more grounded manual experience of a manual SLR with the film winder and rewinder. But I think this is a good blending of both shooting styles, in my opinion. Next up is the Canon SureShot Supreme or the Autoboy 3. Now, this camera is a smaller, much more pocketable, typical point and shoot in comparison to the Trip 35. It has a 38mm f2.8 lens and a pretty strong flash on it as well. It has a nice little screen on the back showing battery power and your exposure number. Additionally, it shoots very fast and has really satisfying shutter and response time. This would be the perfect camera for bringing out to the bars with friends or taking hiking or dirt biking or something, knowing that it's not breaking the bank, but gives you those sweet, sweet tones while being more low key. It comes in at around $75, but you can certainly find some untested ones on eBay that will more than likely still work if the pictures of the camera look solid. If you've been enjoying this video, make sure to give it a like and check out the other video I made about other film point and shoot cameras in 2024, as that list covers five additional cameras. Next up is the Minolta Freedom Zoom. The Minolta Freedom comes in in a variety of different variations, but are some cameras that I always see talked about when it comes to cheaper yet great film point and shoot cameras. The camera is very small, pocketable, lightweight, yet dons an aluminum front shell, a nice construction touch, I think. Many of these obviously have some type of zoom lens that goes out to 70 millimeter or some even 160 millimeter, a pretty crazy long length that surprisingly proves to be useful on a point and shoot. I think especially for hiking and landscapes, having a zoom lens, uh, especially one that can go that far, can prove to be quite useful when capturing mountains or animals or whatnot. Coming in at around $40, I think this would be a great camera for someone wanting to get into film and has outdoor base adventures in mind. Next is the Olympus OZ 140S. In a similar fashion to the last camera, this Olympus also has quite a long zoom lens on it, a 38mm to 140mm lens, which is quite a long boy on quite a small body. This camera is considered to be the cheap MJU or MU, a legendary Olympus point and shoot camera that now goes for a couple hundred dollars at least. This camera, which also has many of the same features, strong flash, clamshell lens hood, can be found on eBay for around $75, which compared to the MU is quite of a deal. Again, I think for nights out, hanging with friends, hiking, camping, etc., this would be an amazing camera to get into for a relatively cheap price. And lastly on the list are the new Ilford, Kodak, and the new Pentax camera. So these cameras are all slotted together as they're technically quote unquote new cameras, but are all reusable plastic cameras, which aren't the best for image quality, to be honest. While I would have a tough time recommending them to anyone who has shot film before or is invested in the hobby, I think to someone who wants to try film for cheap and have an easy, reliable way to get a new camera, these are appealing. Okay, so my washer is going crazy right now. If you hear that in the background, try not to mind it. I see this being an appealing way to get a film camera versus scouring online for a good deal on something 
that you don't really know much about. That being said, these are obviously not going to be crazy high quality, especially in the lens, but they will get your toes wet on a budget. Another good option, depending on when you're watching this video, is the new Pentax camera, which was just talked about recently. Again, this is a much more budget-friendly beginner camera, aiming to try to get a lot more younger people uh, into film photography. But otherwise, that's gonna wrap it up for this list. If you're interested in more cameras, make sure to check out the other video I put out a couple weeks ago. Uh, otherwise, let me know down in the comments what you would recommend to a friend who is asking uh, what point and shoot they should get this year if they were wanting to get into film photography. I think most of you guys always have really good recommendations and I always learn a handful of things from the comments. So please make sure to drop your suggestion down below. Otherwise, that'll do it for this one, guys. Until the next one, stay safe, stay shooting. Adios and uh, yeah, peace out.